In 1984, a convicted killer became a born-again Christian. In 1998, she was executed for her cold-blooded crime. Notorious woman number seven is Carla Faye Tucker. Carla was a rose of Texas, and the heel of injustice crushed her. By all accounts, Carla Faye Tucker endured a brutal childhood. She smoked pot at age eight, did heroin by ten, and by age 14, she sold her body as a prostitute. The consumption of drugs and the lawlessness which her mother was involved in was a terribly uh, bad influence on her, but more importantly, it didn't allow her to mature as you and I would have done in a normal childhood setting. For me, what's weird is thinking back on some of the things that I used to do and thinking, I did that. Carla's nightmare life reached its low point in the wee hours of June 13, 1983. That's when 23-year-old Tucker and her boyfriend Daniel Garrett showed up at the apartment of Jerry Lynn Dean, intending to steal his motorcycle. Garrett and Carla were both high as a kite. You name it, they had it in their system. Everything was ramping them up, ramping them up, ramping them up, until on Sunday night, she says, and I think this is pretty much a direct quote, we was over-amped and we needed something to do. Carla and Danny found Jerry Lindeen in bed with a woman he'd met the previous day, Deborah Thornton. Carla and Danny proceeded to brutally murder Dean and Thornton. The male victim was hit with a pickaxe 31 times, and the female victim 26 times. She bragged about it profusely, made the comments that uh, she had derived uh, sexual pleasure and orgasm with each pick of the pickaxe. They were boasting about it, and her sister and his brother heard so many of the details of the crime. They said, these two are crazy, and we're going to be next. And so 35 days after the crime, they went and turned them in. On September 13, 1983, Carla Faye Tucker was charged with capital murder. She pleaded not guilty. Her trial began the following spring. This was one of those crimes that had everything, like they say, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Uh, Carla had traveled with a rock and roll band. She was young. She was pretty. The murder was gruesome. So that in and of itself caused a lot of interest. It was shocking because of the fact that she was a woman and because of the nature of the crime. People were shocked that a woman would be involved in a crime like that. Tucker was convicted of first-degree murder on April 19, 1984. A week later, the jury sentenced her to death by lethal injection. She had done something horrific, and she bragged about it. And so the feeling mostly was, if anybody deserves the death penalty, she does. By the time of her sentencing, Carla seemed to experience a profound change. Free of drugs for the first time in her adult life, she became a born-again Christian and an active participant in the prison ministry. She had truly changed, and you couldn't deny it. Anybody that came in contact with her saw a changed person. I really believe that deep in her soul, she thought she had to do something to make up for what she'd done. And so she sought to spread what she saw was the word of God. In the years after her conviction, Carla maintained her spiritual demeanor through numerous appeals and delays. By 1997, with her execution looming, Carla became a seminal figure in the national death penalty debate. Carla did become the darling of the anti-death penalty folks. It's easy to say, here's a pickaxe murderer. Well, let's just execute her and get her out of society. But if there ever was someone that we would call rehabilitated, it was Carla. Religious leaders and celebrities petitioned Texas Governor George W. Bush to commute Carla's sentence to life in prison. Pat Robertson spoke up in Carla Faye's behalf during the last days of her life, as did uh, Bianca Jagger, Amnesty International, the Pope. She was a shining example of redemption and what that somebody who does something terrible can still be saved, rehabilitated. And, and that's what part of the criminal justice system is supposed to be about, the rehabilitation of people. But not everybody was so forgiving. She could have granted my wife mercy. She could have commuted my wife's sentence. 
but she did not. She sentenced my wife to death. The governor said he prayed for guidance on the issue. On February 3rd, 1998, he reached a decision. He declined and said um, that uh, God would decide uh, that uh, it was not within his power to, to do that. The following day, more than 200 reporters descended on the Huntsville, Texas prison. They were joined by hundreds of demonstrators, both for and against the execution. The day of her execution can only be classified as a zoo. There's always some protests when people are executed, but nothing like this, nothing like this ever happened. Carla Faye Tucker entered the death chamber at 6.25 p.m. I can't tell you how many times I heard people, not just in Texas, say, I believe in the death penalty, but I don't want her to die. They felt that attachment, that attraction to her, and she entered their hearts. And I'm going home to be with the Lord, and it's certainly a better place than here on this earth. In her last words, Carla thanked the warden and said, I'm going to go face to face with Jesus. I will wait for you. At 6.45 p.m., Carla Faye Tucker was pronounced dead. I remember her spirit, her life. Um, I loved her. And I wish they hadn't killed her. You know, she had a lot to give. She would still be giving it today.